This is part 25 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss Bootstrap input groups. Bootstrap input groups extend input elements by adding text, icons, or buttons before, after, or on both sides of the input elements. Input groups are limited to textual input elements only. Try to avoid using select and text area elements as they are not fully supported by some browsers. Let's look at a few examples now. Notice within this first example right here, we have placed this text dollar before the input element. And in this example, we have placed this text dot zero zero after the input element. And in this example, we have text placed on either sides of the input element. And in this example, we have placed this icon before the input element. And here we have a checkbox and a radio button. Let's look at all these in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. The first thing that we need to do here is create an input group. To create an input group, all we need to do is create a div element with class set to input group. And inside this input group, we want a text box. So let's create an input element of type text. Let's set its class to form control. And let's also include a placeholder. Let's save our changes and when we reload this page, we get a text box with the specified placeholder. Now what we want to do is place this text dollar before that input element. To do that, we are going to create a span element. And then the class of the span element is going to be input group add-on. And whatever text you want to place before the input element, just include the text inside this span element. So we want to place this dollar. Now, when we reload this page, notice this dollar is placed before the input element. If you want it after the input element, all you need to do is place that span element after the input element. Let's change this dollar to dot zero zero. When we reload the page, notice it's placed after the input element as expected. Now if you want text to be placed on either sides of the input element, then include the span element with class set to input group add on on either sides. So before the input element, we want dollar and after the input element, we want dot zero zero. So now when we reload this page, notice we have the text before and after the input element as expected. Let's now discuss using icons with input groups. So here is what we want to do. We want to include this icon before the input element. This is a glyph icon. You can find all the glyph icons at this URL, getbootstrap.com forward slash components. So this is the icon that we want to use. Look at the name of the icon. It's glyph icon, glyph icon dash envelope. At the moment, we are using this text dollar with the input group. So I'm going to delete that. And then to use the glyph icon with the input group, inside this span element, I'm going to create another span element. And the class of this is going to be the name of the glyph icon. And the name of the glyph icon is glyph icon, glyph icon dash envelope. Let's see our changes. And when we reload this page, notice we get the icon placed before the input element as expected. A checkbox or a radio button can also be used as an add-on instead of text or icons. To use a checkbox as an add-on, all we need to do is replace this span element with input type equals checkbox. Notice when we reload our page, we get a checkbox as expected. If you want a radio button instead of a checkbox, include input type radio. Now, notice we get a radio button. For sizing the controls in an input group, use input group LG or input group SM classes on the input group. Let's look at this in action. At the moment, we are not using any of those classes, input group LG or input group SM. So the size that we are getting for this input group here is the default size. Let's make two more copies of this input group. So here, we are getting the default size. So let's change the placeholder 
to default. And on this input group, let's use input group LG class. LG stands for large. And let's change the placeholder to large. And on this input group, let's use input group SM. SM stands for small. Let's change the placeholder here to small. And let's include a break element between the first two input groups and another break element between the last two input groups. Let's reload this page. Notice, depending on the classes that we have used, we get different sizes as expected. Thank you for listening and have a great day.